Right, today we're going to have a go at drawing our own portrait. So we're going to have a look at the basic stages that you need to go through to build up your portrait. So here are some examples, some really good portraits. So they are showing um, good proportion. So that basically means everything is in the right place and they're the right size. So we don't have giant bush baby eyes. Uh, we don't have eyes on their forehead. Uh, we don't have lips that are somewhere on their chin and they've got really good sense of tone so everywhere should be shaded uh, unless you've got whites of your eyes in reflection everywhere should have a tonal range on it okay so the first step when you are drawing your portrait is you have to decide on what is the shape of the face of the person so you can either draw yourself using a mirror uh, you could draw someone else in front of you um, if you're not available to do that, you could use a photograph, I don't mind, but I would like you to draw from it rather than trace from it. So decide on the shape of the face. So I know these faces shapes are quite weird. No one actually has a triangle shape face, but you'll find that people have different shapes. So it might be slightly wider across the top where you have your forehead compared to where their chin is down the bottom you might find that the height and the width of the face are quite similar. So it ends up being quite round or quite square. Uh, you might find they've got a really sharp jawline um, around from the kind of um, the bottom of the face. So like a triangle or a heart or a diamond. You might find that actually the shape of the face isn't very curved. It actually looks quite flat along like the top and the bottom of the face. So just look really carefully at the actual kind of shape of it. Although we often say draw an oval, you'll probably find that actually to get an accurate face shape of your particular subject, you need to look a little bit closer to identify them. So I know this is a very weird oval. Um, you're gonna start by putting in your guidelines. So I put a guideline down the middle so that you keep um, your features symmetrical. And I put a guideline for your eye, your nose and your mouth. So your eye line is going to be halfway down your face. If you put your um, thumbs in towards your corner of your eyes and you reach at the top of your head and then move it down, you'll find that it is halfway down your face. OK, and people forget to do that. They often forget about where their hair is going to go, um, where things where your eyebrows are going to go. Um, so although it does look like it's a big forehead, it isn't. You're then going to put in your nose line. Now your nose line is halfway between your eye line and obviously the bottom of your chin. So that's where your bottom of your nose is going to fit. And then finally, you've got the mouth line. So the mouth line is again going to be halfway between the nose line and the bottom of your chin. That mouth line is going to be where you're in the middle of your, where your lips meet. And then you should have reasonably good proportion um, when you're drawing your face. These lines should be really, really, really light. Okay, because you're going to then rub them out as you start to draw your features. in. The next step is to work out the space in your eyes. Now you can usually fit five eyes across your head. Okay, if the face is just straight on looking at you. Um, we've described like last time that your eye is usually or looks very much similar to a very kind of stretched lemon. Um, you should be able to see the kind of bumps in the corners where you have the tear ducts and obviously the corner of your eye. Now you can usually get five eyes across and your eyes are obviously going to fit in the second and fourth shape on this screen here. So it's going to fit here and it's going to fit here. You do not need to draw all of these as circles as such, um, but just roughly mark on where it comes across and you should get the width of your eye correct. The next thing you're going to draw is your nose. Now noses come in a huge range of shape and size. Some noses are very pointed and narrow. Some noses are quite flat and wide. Some noses you can see loads of the nostril some of them they're very very subtle so on here you've got a page of ranges of loads of different types of forms of nose so have a little look and see which nose identifies the best to your subject the easiest way i find to draw your nose is to draw 
the kind of handlebar shapes, which is the bottom part of the nostrils and underneath the ball of the nose, and then to put brackets around it. And that bracket shape is then the outside of your nostrils. Now the nose goes all the way up until it reaches your eyebrows. It goes all the way up to eyebrows. It doesn't stop halfway. Um, and I don't want to see heavy lines. You should be just literally shading in the form to give that shape of your nose. So that would be the next feature you're going to add. It should be at the bottom of your nose, should fit onto your nose line. The next feature is your lips. Okay, so your lips are going to fit along the um, mouth line that you've drawn. The first top lip is like a stretched M. You should be able to see a very slight kind of divot in the middle of your lips. Okay, and that is repeated along the bottom of that lip as well. Okay, it should curve towards the very, very center of that lip. Um, to complete your lip is literally like just a smiley face to join them together. OK, remember where your lips go and how they are in line. Compare it to other features, for example, on your face. So is it in line with your nose? Quite clearly not. So you need to go a lot of the time your lips actually are in line with where your pupils are within your eye. So make sure they are. You don't draw your mouth either too stretched and too wide or draw it too thin and too small like a pout. To add ears then, your ears are usually uh, in the top in line with your eyes as they come across and depending on your face shape and, and things like that, they will fit um, usually on the bottom in line with the bottom of your nose or between the top of your lip, anywhere between that distance. So you need to make sure that you, you don't draw your ears too big or too small. When you are drawing your ears, please don't just draw like a round shape. That is not what your ears look like. If you look at this person here, you'll find it tends to go out and up. It then comes round and then curves in towards the bottom. OK, it's usually angled towards your jawline. Um, so it gets closer to the face as it gets down towards the earlobe and tends to be further out towards the top as it comes away from your um, head. Final then um, detail is starting to add is your hair of course. Now remember when you are putting your hair on it needs to go past your ear. You do your hair doesn't just magically start somewhere at the top it goes all the way past your ear so you make sure you need to be drawing on that. So like on here for example you can see the hair has gone past the ear on um, this person so make sure you include that. Um, you then need to look carefully at the direction of the hair. Um, so even on someone that's got straight hair, you can see that some uh, hairs curve out, some curve in, some um, go round, some maybe loop out. Um, and they are different colours as well, so different tones that you should be using. Um, you'll probably find where it gets closer to the roots, they tend to be much darker and that's where you have more shadows, uh, where at the very top of the, the head, they're much lighter. Um, you need to look very carefully at each kind of part of your hair because your hair isn't always in one direction. You'll have some falling in one direction, some in another. Um, if you have your hair up, for example, they are going to come across rather than down. Um, so look very closely at the direction of the hair and how it is pulling um, or how it is falling um, to make sure you get an accurate representation of the hair that you are drawing. Here is an example of how I've started to build up a portrait. So I've drawn a rough guide of my shape of my face and then I've started to put my guidelines in. So my symmetrical line, um, my line of my eyes, which is halfway, and I've just checked that and measuring against my hand. And then I'm going to now put in the other guidelines in. So I need to put a guideline in for my nose Again, see how they're quite faint. I don't want to be pressing very hard because I want to be able to rub these lines out afterwards. And then finally is my mouth line. Again, I probably would have probably moved this up slightly because I think it's a little low, but you're getting the idea of dividing it half, half and half again. 
I then start to put in the actual eye guidelines. So I've roughly worked out I can get how many five eyes can go across. Um, I don't need to draw all of the shapes in, I just need to draw in where my eyes are going to go. Um, this is all very, very light, just so I can see until I'm happy with the actual shapes. So in your first week, you should be concentrating on working out the actual guides, lines, and actually working out where the features are and getting those shapes in, rather than having to draw in all the detail at this point. So I've then marked in where my mouth is and the width of my mouth. mouth. Again, it should be thinking about where your pupils are. And then also to be using, um, working out where I've got my ears, keeping in line with using the guidelines of the eyes and nose on both sides. And then also starting to fill in um, that space of that giant forehead with things like your eyebrows. Now you will see is most of that forehead will actually be taken up by hair. So you need to look really carefully about actually where the hair is, the direction of the hair, where it's going to fall as you're starting to build up your portrait. Once you've got your guidelines in and you're quite happy with the actual proportions of the face, you can then finally start to add details in, okay, to actually finish your portrait off, okay. And then finally will be to add tone. So look at where you've got your shadow.